Today's first reading gives us a great side-by-side -side comparison of a virtuous person and a not-so-virtuous person. We see the virtuous person in the figure of Uriah and the non-virtuous person in the person who should be the most virtuous, King David. And we see a great side-by-side -side comparison of living virtuously, which seems to fit with today's Feast of St. Thomas Aquinas and his discussion of virtues. Anyways, so we have these two great figures who teach us what it is to be virtuous. Now, to be virtuous is to separate, oops, I almost slipped into Spanish there, is to always choose the good, that I always choose the good. So for people of faith, like us, it means that I, as a Catholic, am always choosing what Christ wants, what God wants for me. So, and there are four characteristics that we can see in a virtuous person. I picked this up from a great little book that I started reading called The Art of Living by Edward Sree, which talks about the virtues. And he says the virtuous person does four things. They act virtuously consistently, promptly, easily, and joyfully. Now, consistently, easily, promptly, and joyfully. I'm still trying to come up with a good acronym to remember this. So let's take an example. Let's say that you are tempted to gossip. You're in a group of friends and they're speaking poorly about somebody. Now the virtuous person would just shut it off, not enter into it. They say, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Or they might counteract with saying something positive about the person. The not so virtuous person would, might find themselves doing gossip once in a while, entering into it. Maybe for them, it's a, it's this hard interior struggle. Or maybe they do it, oh, I don't, I don't really want to share something. I want to, want to say something bad about this person. So there's sort of this interior fight. It's not as easy to do, or they're not doing it joyfully. So we can see these characteristics play out when we are not being virtuous. Or take, for example, I love this example that he uses in the book. Imagine two husbands. One is a virtuous man who is tempted to have an affair. He says, no, I'm not doing that. For him, it's easy. <laughs> he's consistent. He's prompt in his response. And he's joyful. No, I love my life. wife. Why would I do that? You know, the not so virtuous guy might do something like, oh, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, maybe I can be send some messages or I can be really nice around that person or I can flirt, but that's like where it's going to stop. Now imagine these two men having a conversation with their wives. The one who says, I didn't do anything. There's nothing here. The not so virtuous guy who says, honey, I thought about being unfaithful. I wrestled with it for a long time. I considered it. I flirted with the boundaries of what would be acceptable, but I wasn't unfaithful. Um, you know, it was a real interior struggle for me, but in the end, I chose you. Now, I doubt that that wife is going to say, honey, I'm proud of you for choosing the good. <laughs> she would say, what's wrong with you? What took you so long? What were you thinking about, right? And she has total right to do that, and she should do that. The virtuous person chooses the good consistently, promptly, easily, and joyfully. It's a great reminder for us as we go about our day. Do we act that way virtuously? Do we choose the good consistently, promptly, easily, and joyfully? Maybe that's a great reminder for us as we seek to live the virtuous life, as we seek to live a life following Christ, to do those four things today.